Okay, so a lot of parents of little kids, including me, are really curious about the latest news on the COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. So I spoke with Dr. Stephen Jacobson from Primera Blue Cross about what parents need to know right now. I think a lot of parents are concerned about the safety of these vaccines for children as young as five years old. You know, it's one thing to get the shot ourselves, but what about the five-year-olds? Is it safe and are there side effects? Yeah, I think it is safe for the younger children age five to 11. So for the, for the Pfizer vaccine, almost 250 million doses have been given in, in the U.S. And that's down to age 12. And, and that's been studied very closely. There's the very nice mobile apps where you can report any symptoms you have. So it's a vaccine that's been looked at very carefully. The FDA and the CDC looked at the study that the, the company did at Pfizer in that age group, age five to 11. And they found that the vaccine was very effective and it was very safe. There were some common uh, side effects such as um, side of immunization, irritation or discomfort. Uh, there was less so uh, some headache or fatigue. But in the group that they studied, there were no serious side effects seen. When do you think this is going to be approved? Well, uh, ACIP, the Advisory Council Immunization Practices, uh, is just approved the uh, vaccine, and that'll go to the uh, CDC director for final approval. Uh, so it'll be likely available within a day or two, and so very soon, and it'll be out there. I attended a uh, call of the De Washington Department of Health this morning, and they're already gearing up and ready to uh, have the vaccines available to go as soon as possible. That's actually really reassuring to hear that they're getting ready. Why has this approval process taken so long? I mean, we had vaccines for adults uh, almost a year ago now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, we'd just like to be more careful with children for medicines and vaccines. And so for a medicine or vaccine that's planned for both adults and children, uh, they, we start with adults first. And it's looked at carefully in that group. Children are different in many ways. They're growing rapidly. Their hormones are different. But they're the same in other ways as well. And so the fact that this has been looked at or given to so many adults, I think that provides that extra assurance that it's safe for our children as well. I'll take all the assurance I can get to protect my kids. With the Delta variant, a lot of us parents were really freaked out because it was affecting more children than normal. Is this vaccine for kids coming at a time uh, that is an important stage of the pandemic? We are all really tired of this pandemic and just would like it to go away. And in many ways, we're in what we call the fifth stage of the pandemic or the fifth rise in cases, you know, as you, as you mentioned from the Delta variant. Now, fortunately, cases are declining across the U.S., but they're still pretty high. Mm -hmm. And there's been a number of schools that have closed recently and throughout uh, Western Washington. And, and that's because of uh, an outbreak of COVID cases. I think getting this vaccine to that younger children, it's one's going to keep them protected but then it's going to keep adults protected as well and allow our, our schools to stay open. And just to be clear, the mechanisms in these vaccines are the same that are used for adults, correct? Yeah, the, the Pfizer vaccine for the children is exactly the same makeup as for adults. It is a smaller dose. It's one third of the adult dose. Well, that makes sense. Smaller human, smaller dose. I know some folks might be really worried and not get their kids vaccinated, but there's a huge risk to not getting your child vaccinated, right? Like heart problems linked with COVID? Yes. So even though younger children generally will, will surf through a COVID infection, um, you know, more easily than an adult mm -hmm. would, um, they can still get really sick with it. So there's 28 million children uh, in between the ages of five to 11 in our country. Uh, we know there's been at least uh, 8,000 hospitalizations. There's at least uh, about 5,000 cases of what's called a multi-system inflammatory syndrome where you get really sick mm -hmm. and there's been about 100 deaths in the country of, of young children even mm -hmm. children that had no other health conditions they were otherwise healthy yeah scary stuff yeah speaking of which if you're an adult and you've received a vaccine is it time to be rescheduling a booster shot when when should we plan that i was march so i'm trying to think is am i ready <laughs> yes. Um, so for people who have had an mRNA vaccine, that's either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you are ready for a booster under the following circumstances. If it's been six months since your last dose and you're eligible for the under the following conditions. So if you're over age 65 or if you're over age 18 and 
you are uh, living in a long-term care situation, if you have a, a chronic health condition, or if you uh, live or work in a, in a situation where you're at higher risk of exposure, such as uh, uh, teachers or such as healthcare workers. And to learn more about what we discussed today on vaccines and boosters, you can visit the website on your screen for more info. Coming up next, we are discussing that New York Times article about workplace strife between millennials and Gen Z with our own staffers from each generation. It should be interesting, so stick around. This portion of New Day Northwest is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross. 